Hi, my name is Abram Vandervloot, and my presentation is called Gaming in the Classroom. I'm going to share four things with you, the arcade games, crossword puzzles, Minecraft, and the zombie outbreak response team. All of these resources are available at the class website, www.southgatehs.org forward slash Vandervloot. And let's head over there right now. So here's the class website. If you click on student work, here's where all the information is for the different uh, assignments my students can do. And here's the arcade game. And rather than talk about it, here's a little video clip I made about it. Okay, so this is an assignment called an arcade game assignment. And students usually get this assignment <clears throat> after they've completed lecture notes of some kind. So students who have taken a lecture, for example, this is the heredity and Mendel and heredity lecture. So we'll have done a PowerPoint lecture. They've taken their notes. They've answered some questions, maybe done a crossword puzzle. And now it's time for them to build an arcade game. So there's a great website called classtools.net, and you can make your own arcade games. You can put a title. Uh, you have to put in at least 10 questions and answers. And then you click my game, uh, generate my games. Gotta give a password. And then the, the website automatically uh, generates a series of arcade games that um, you can then share. You can copy the, copy the link, paste it um, as a reply. And again, all the students can see this. So they paste their game, and then other students can just click on the link, and it will take take them to uh, the arcade games that the students made. Here you can see there's Pac-Man, Manic Miner, Word Shoot, there's all kinds. And the way it works is uh, Pac-Man, for example, before you get to play a level, you have to answer a question correctly, and you answer it correctly, and you get to play the level. And that's how these arcade games work. You have to answer questions, play the game. And it's just a way of students using their notes, uh, causing them to go through their notes again and revisit the content as they're making it, and then also as they're playing it. That is an arcade game assignment. The last link here is a peer review worksheet. And this is what you give them um, to fill out while they're playing their partner's game. So they're keeping track of how many questions they have and also checking for accuracy. They then use the rubric to give their partner a grade and that's what they turn into you. Um, so they're grading it for you because I don't have time to play 180 games. So it's good because it, uh, they, they review their notes as they're making the game and then as they're playing the game. So it's a good... It's a good um, assignment and the students enjoy it. Uh, another uh, assignment, similar, is the crossword puzzle game. Again, I got a little video explaining it. Okay, so here's how you do a crossword puzzle assignment. Uh, you open up the link to the website, and this is a website that anyone can use. Just scroll down here, give it a title, and then you put in the words and you give clues. So try to be a little creative in that. And then once you've got the, the number of clues you want, click Make a Crossword Puzzle. And here it is. See your puzzle. And what you're going to do is save it as a PDF. Click that little button. Click Create PDF. <clears throat> and then it downloads it. You'll download, look for it in your download file or on your desktop. I put, I put mine in the desktop. And there it is. Click on it, double check to make sure it's what you want. And then mosey on over to Edmodo where you're going to right up here you'll post it as a reply so that other people can download and play it if they want to. Um, and I can see that you've done it. A little note. A crossword puzzle, and then attach your PDF crossword puzzle. Click reply, 
And there you go. Good job. And again, there is a crossword puzzle peer review that the students fill out while they're playing each other's puzzles. They're again keeping track of how many clues they have and whether or not the information is accurate. And then they use the rubric to grade it and that's what they turn into you. Um, it's similarly, do you have time to do 180 crossword puzzles? So, but it's a good review for them um, while they make it and then while they solve it. Last but not least, we've got the Minecraft Quest. Very, very ambitious and, well, I'll let the video speak for itself. Okay, so here is an example of a student's uh, Minecraft quest. They built a maze, and at every intersection, there's a question to answer. And correct answers lead to the right course through the maze. Uh, let's see what happens when we get the wrong question. I guess I answered it correctly. I'm so smart. I can't even answer wrong when I want to. All right, let's try it this time. A wrong question leads to a wall of lava. Quick, run away. The lava's getting us. Let's go back and check the question again. Oh, there we go. So the idea is that students, um, after a lecture, and they've taken notes, they then use the notes to build a quest such as this maze that they then share with their classmates and they play each other's games and as they're playing they're reviewing their notes again um, so this is just another way to get students to work with the information the research shows it takes the average person three to five exposures to something before they understand it internalized it so it's another way to do that let's face it also kind of fun it's a video game let's see so for a particular quest there's the requirement is that there are 10 questions they can do more let's see where this leads oh the sun's going down Barely read the question. Could have used some porches. And here we are. Yay! We completed it. And there is a prize. Ooh, our diamond armor. Now it'll look really pretty. Well, that's it. It's an example. Watch the sunset on this beautiful day in Minecraft land. Here it is. And again, after the, as they're playing each other's games, they're filling out the peer review and keeping track of how many questions there are, making sure it's accurate, and also paying attention to um, the dead ends. If they lead to traps, uh, if they make use of redstone, such as levers, buttons, pressure plates, and those are all features in Minecraft that um, you probably don't know anything about, but your students do. And um, it's a great opportunity for them to show what they know. And um, it's also great because this is a time, you know, there, here are all the resources on how to do this. And it's, it's a little overwhelming if you don't have any experience with Minecraft. But what's really neat is that um, you do have students in your classroom who, who do have experience with this. And oftentimes, you know, those kids kind of get marginalized by their peers, and this kind of project brings them to the front and center, because they're the Minecraft experts, and you can kind of have them lead little groups in, uh, in helping other students learn how to use it. And it's a good opportunity for you to um, model humility, that you, know, you don't know Minecraft, but you hear it's really cool, and Hey, Mr. Vanderflute does this with his students, and there's some samples, and so it's a great opportunity. Um, it takes a long time. I tend to do this at, uh, as a culminating task. Um, right? I teach biology, so you know, our first unit is cells, so you have to build something uh, that has to do with cells. 
you know, build a DNA model. And so you know, it's pretty ambitious, but the students um, really like it. Uh, the last thing to sh I wanted to share with you was this thing called the Zombie Outbreak Response Team. And resort is is a kind of a backstory I've made for my class where the students have to uh, use what they learn about biology to defeat different zombies. And that's not really what I want to share with you. What I want to share with you is the, the gaming psychology behind this grading scale here. If you notice, um, every student in the class starts with zero points and they have to work their way up to their grade. Now this, this is a five week period, so they have five weeks to earn 2,000 points. And this is different from telling them that, you know, you have 100% the first day of class. And it's up to you to keep doing your work or you're going, your grade is going to drop. There's something psychologically about that. It's very intimidating, especially to a ninth grade boy, perhaps. Um, it's been my experience that that threat of taking away my grade and it dropping down, it's, it kind of... Uh, is intimidating and uh, whereas I think part of the reason they love playing video games is that you start with zero points and you have to earn points to level up and once you level up you can't drop back down there's something about that so for example a student said oh well you know I I'm at I'm at 100 points, oh, I, you know, if I can do five more assignments, I can get to a D. And if I do 10 more assignments, I can get to a C. And, oh, let me really study for this test and try to get those 100 points and get up to a C plus. So it's encouraging them uh, to work harder and set goals for themselves. So this is just my model um, that I developed over the summer. I haven't been able to try it, though, because Schoology doesn't do grades this way. So i got to figure another way to do it. But I just wanted to share that with you because I, it's, again, an example of bringing uh, the gaming psychology into education. And um, so anyway, that's my presentation. If you have any questions or uh, want to talk about any of this stuff, like I said, it's all on the class website. Um, you can send me an email if you have questions or you can stop by my room. I'm in 307, not 212, 307. Stop by any time and uh, be happy to talk about this stuff with you and help you with anything you need. Thanks. Bye.